Hello and welcome to this beginner's guide to first, second and third normal form when looking at database normalization. So let's get started. First normal form. This one is nice and simple. All rows must be unique and all cells must contain atomic values. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's really quite simple. Each row in the table uh, must be unique and therefore there cannot be any duplicate rows in the table. So you can't have two different rows where all of the data contained within those, uh, those rows is identical. And we'll look, give you an example in a minute. And each cell must only contain a single value. So you can't have a cell in a table that has a list of values in that cell. That's a no-no. And finally, each value should be non-divisible which means that if you've got something in a cell, you can't break that down into further sensible parts. So let's have a look at an example of each of those. So each row must be, each row must be unique. So let's have a look here. We've got a, uh, a table of takeaway orders here, and we've got for each takeaway order, we've got a customer name and a customer order. So, for instance, Bob Jones ordered here, he ordered burger, fries and coke. Fred ordered nuggets, lemonade and fries. And then Bob also ordered burger, fries and coke. Now, that's fine, apart from we don't, we can't tell the difference between this row here and this row here. So, we have no idea, for instance, which, which order was ordered first. We have no idea at all. So, we need to change that because they need to be uniquely identifiable. And the way we do that, nice and simple, is we just add an order ID column. So here, order ID number one, well that was Bob Jones, and he ordered his favourites there. Order ID two was, uh, was Fred's, and he ordered all those. And then the final order was Bob Jones, and he ordered his favourite uh, order again there. So because we got these order ID, that row there is now long, no longer ident uh, identical to that row there. There we go, good. So that's the first part of first normal form done. Second part, let's have a look. Each cell must only contain a single value. Well, yeah, as you can see here, this cell here doesn't contain a single value. It contains three items, a burger, fries, and Coke. Uh, in fact, all of them do. So these ones here these in this, um, in this area, the actual order I do, they all do. So that's no good. So what we need to do there is we need to move those into a separate table so that each row only has one item. Let's have a look. So it's going to look a bit like that. This table here has an order ID in one column and the item corresponding to that order ID there. So order ID 1 has a burger, order ID 1 also has fries, and order ID 1 also has a Coke in there. And as you can see, each item in this table now uh, is unique and there's no dupe, uh, dub, um, multiple values per cell here. So that's sorted now. So that's the second bit. Good. Third thing, all data must be atomic or non-divisible. Well, what's the problem? Well, if you have a look over here at customer name, Bob Jones, you can actually see that Bob Jones isn't atomic. It can be divided further into Bob's into his first name and last name, and that's no good. Okay, because this that makes it some kind of composite value. That's no good. It needs to be separated out because those are different things, and it looks just like that. So you create a column for their first name, a column for their last name, and you just put them in separate cells. It looks like that. Good. So that's how you put a database table into first normal form. So now let's move on to second normal form. Now, second normal form, not quite as much to it. All you need is there are no partial dependencies. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is, first of all, that the table must first be in first normal form. So you can't have a table that's in second normal form until you've gone through uh, all those rules that we just did from the previous one from first normal form. It must, uh, it must do those first. And then we must have all non-prime attributes should be fully dependent on the candidate key. And it's fully uh, dependent on the whole candidate key. Well, what does that mean? It sounds a bit complicated, but it's not. So let's have a look here. We've got a list here of students 
uh, so the student ID, the course ID that that student is doing, and how much that course costs. So here, this student, uh, they're doing course, uh, so student one is doing course ID number one, and that course costs um, 500. And student, uh, so look, so student ID two here, he's doing course three, and it's 750. And student three is, uh, sorry, student two is doing, is doing course three. And here, student three is also doing course three, and it's costing 750. Well, what's the problem with this table? And the problem is, is that the course fee has got nothing to do with the student ID. So the course fee is a set fee that only depends on the course ID. So this particular course, course one, costs 500. Uh, course two costs 1,000. Course three costs 750. And as you can see here, it doesn't matter whether it's student ID, student two is doing course three or student three is doing course three, for either of those students, it costs 750 for each. And that's because the course fee has nothing to do with the student ID. Now it's important here to note that the course fee is not dependent on the student ID and the student ID forms part of this composite key here of student ID and course ID. So this is the composite key, but this bit is only dependent on that bit and it's not dependent on that bit and that's where you get this partial bit because it's not dependent it is dependent on this part of the composite key but it's not dependent on this part of the composite key so that's where we get the partial part of it so what have we got to do to fix this well nice and simple all we do is we move this information to a separate table just like that so we have a table about course fees and each course ID has a course fee attached to it. Course one is 500, course two is 1000, etc. And the other table, we pretty much keep the same. We just, but we don't need this extra course fee information. We just get rid of that column and we only have the student ID and the corresponding course ID. So student one is doing course one, student one is also doing course two, student two is doing course one and course three etc etc so that is no partial dependency it must be fully dependent on each of these parts of the composite key if you've got one okay so that's second normal form third normal form no transitive dependency so it's similar to the previous one but we're not talking this time about the primary key or the composite key we're talking about something else so just like when you tried to put something into second normal form, it had to already be in first normal form. Well, third normal form is the same idea. What you need to do is it needs to be in second normal form. But of course, that also means that therefore, if it needs to be in second normal form, it must also be in first normal form because the two go back. So anything that's in third's got to be in second, and obviously anything that's in second's already got to be in first. So it needs to tick all those other boxes. It can't be duplicates, it can't be divisible, it can't be multiple values. It also can't have a partial dependency. So all of those, and then it must also do this third, uh, this other, other item here, which is no transitive dependency. Again, sounds a bit weird, but all it means is that all fields must be only determinable by the primary or composite key, and you can't determine the any of the fields by other keys in there. So what does that mean? Well, let me show you a nice simple example. Here we go. So here we've got a list of tournaments that I've pulled from Wikipedia, uh, and here it's uh, there's the tournament name, and that's the year the tournament was in, and then we've got the winner of the tournament, and the winner's date of birth. So uh, this works well, it, it's, it all fits through to first and second normal form, but there is a problem with this, um, with this table. And the problem is, is that you can determine one of these keys by looking at another one of those keys. And you see which one it is? Well, nice and simple, it's here. You can tell who the win what the winner's date of birth is by going to the winner's name. So here, you can go, you know that the winner's date of birth is this, this date of birth, 
because that's his name okay and he's got that name so although it's not dependent on these bits here you can't tell the winner's date of birth from the uh, tournament name or the year you can tell the winner's date of birth from the winner's name okay so that's no good so this information as it stands can't sit inside of the table so what have we got to do we've got to fix that and you could do that by having a separate table of winners here so for instance here we've got the uh, in, we've got the tournament name the year and the winners the winner there and we have a separate table that says okay al Fredrickson, his day of birth is this and we split the two in uh, split the two and this this works because here the winner is dependent on the tournament uh, the tournament name and the year because that tournament happens every year so you can't work out who the winner is just by the name of the tournament itself and there are multiple tournaments in one year which means you can't determine the winner just by looking at the year you have to use both of the name of the tournament and the year in which it was held in order to work out who the winner is so that fits perfectly and then over here again the date of birth corresponds to that particular winner there you go okay good so that is first second and third normal form uh, uh, if you like that then please subscribe to my channel if you've got any comments or any suggestions for other videos then please just uh, drop me a comment and uh, good luck thank you very much hi this video is about normalizing a database uh, from normal forms one two three and four uh, for the example I mocked up an imaginary company that sells video game consoles uh, some of their products are Xbox one from Microsoft PlayStation 4 from Sony and the handheld PlayStation called PlayStation Vita from Sony and they also have uh, two newsletters one is for Xbox One new releases and one for PlayStation 4 new releases. Signing up for these newsletters is optional. It's not tied to any purchase. Uh, a member can sign up for either one of these or both of these or none of these at will. Uh, it doesn't matter. So these are some of their sales records. They uh, currently keep track of customer name, the item purchased, the shipping address, what newsletter this mm, person signed up for, what is the supplier of the item, and what is the phone number of the supplier, and what is the price of the purchase. So they have uh, someone named Ellen Smith. These are just imaginary items. Uh, but anyway, there's somebody named Alan Smith. He bought an Xbox One. He lives in Miami. He subscribed for the Xbox newsletter. The supplier for the Xbox is Microsoft, and their phone number is 1 800 buy Xbox, and the price was 250. The next uh, person bought named Roger Smith. He bought a, I mean, so Roger Banks. He bought a PlayStation 4. He lives on Campus Road in Boston. He subscribed for the PlayStation News, and that was supplied by Sony. Their phone is by Sony, and the price of that was three hundred. Uh, the next person, Evan Wilson, he bought an Xbox One and a PlayStation Vita. He lives in Denver. He subscribed to both newsletters, and the supplier it says wholesale, and the supplier phone number it says toll free. And this is what somebody entered in here, and the total price was four fifty. And there's another item uh, named Alan Smith. It's the same as this. At least the name is the same. This person bought a PlayStation 4. He also lives on Campus Road in Boston, which is the same address as for this person, Roger Banks. He subscribed for the PlayStation News, Sony, buy Sony, and the price was 300. Uh, and the color code just ignore the color code there's no meaning to that it's just for visual cue so anyway these are some of their sales records and I'm gonna normalize these so first normal form and the criteria are each cell to be single value so Xbox One and PlayStation Vita occur in the same cell so is this so we have to eliminate that 
uh, entries in a column are the same type. So this one says wholesale and toll free here. These are not the same, these are not the proper values. So we need some kind of uh, entry here that matches these. It would be like if let's say this field would be eye color and someone put like, uh, I don't know, blue or green and beautiful. Well, beautiful is not a color, it's an opinion. So we need some kind of uh, actual entry. We can't we can't let this be in here. Uh, also, rows uniquely identified. Either add a unique ID or add more columns to make the rows unique. Well, these rows, there's no duplicates in these rows, so they unique in a way, but they're still um, a question about this Ellen Smith. Well, this campus road in Boston happens to be a housing for a college. So this this Roger Banks rents a house while he's in college, and Ellen Smith also rents the same house with them. They rent it together, uh, so they have the same address while they are in college. So the question is now, is this Alan Smith from Miami is going to college in Boston and this is the same guy? Is just now this is his address or they are completely different people? From this table, we cannot figure that out. So those are the issues. So this is uh, the table in first normal form. So each cell to be single valued. So the Evan Wilson, these two items, was separated out to two separate rows. One for Xbox One and one for PlayStation Vita. Notice this has four rows here, and this has now five because he made two purchases in one transaction. So that takes care of that. Entry in the column are the same type. Well, wholesale and toll-free was replaced with the proper values. So now we don't allow entry of just random values in here. They have to be filled out properly. And the rows must be uniquely identified. So uh, these people are made to create some kind of customer ID that they can sign up, uh, sign in to this website. So this person, his name happens to be Alan Thomas Smith. So he created a user ID AT Smith. Rogers Bank has Roger 25, Evan Wilson is Wilson 44, and this person, his name happens to be Ellen Michael Smith, so his, his uh, user ID is A.M. Smith. So now we know for sure that these two people have nothing to do with each other, and now we can uniquely identify each of these customers. Okay, second normal form. All attributes meaning non-key columns, meaning these these white ones, uh, dependent on the key, which is this one, this red. So which one of these don't depend on the key? Well, let's see, how about the price? So does the customer ID determine the price? In other words, does the price depend on who buys it? And the answer is no. It uh, doesn't matter who buys an Xbox One, the price will be the same. When when Alan Smith or Evan Wilson buy it, the price will be the same. So the the key in the table doesn't determine this. So th we have attributes, meaning columns, that don't depend on the key. So those have to be separated out. So what I did is I take the customer ID, the name, the shipping address, and the subscription into one table, and then I take the item, which becomes the primary key in the other table, the supplier, the supplier phone number, and the price into another table. And obviously I'm only going to list one item one time. Uh, so now the price, the supplier, and the supplier phone and the supplier depend on this because Xbox One has Microsoft to supply. This is their phone number and this is the price. And this customer has this is his name, this shipping address, and this is what it's subscribed to. Obviously, this person subscribes it too. So 
he's in here twice. So this is great. The only problem is we lost the transactions. We don't know who bought what. So for that, uh, there needs to be a, a table called the junction table, which is this. Uh, and basically, these, in this table, these are, both of these are a key. This is called a compound key because it's made up of two columns. And now, these entries from AT Smith bought an Xbox One is over here. So this guy bought this. And Roger 25 bought a PlayStation 4. Wilson 44 bought Xbox One and the Vita and AM Smith bought a PlayStation 4. So uh, the transactions are here. And now this and this are lookup table. So basically AM Smith bought an Xbox One. Who's A I'm sorry, A T Smith. Who who is that guy? Well, his name is this. He lives here and he subscribed to this. What's Xbox One? Well Xbox One is supplied by Microsoft. This is how you buy more of it. If you run out and this is the price. So this is not in second normal form because every every attribute depends on the key. We separate them out. Great. Third normal form. All fields, meaning columns, can be determined only by the key in the table and no other column. Okay, so what can we do problem here? Well, the problem is that Microsoft and the buy Xbox phone number always goes together. The Sony and the buy Sony phone number always goes together. It even says in here, this phone number is never going to go with Microsoft and this phone number is never going to go with Sony. So in the item table, if, we, if the only thing we would know is Microsoft, we already know that this is the phone number or, or if we know Sony, well, we know it's going to be this the phone number. So obviously, we need to separate it out also because these phone numbers keep repeating. If I would add more items here, like a camera for PlayStation, a camera for Xbox, controller, blah, 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 you would notice that Microsoft, Sony, Microsoft, Sony, and their phone numbers keep repeating. So if I would change, if I would have to change, the phone number I would have to change it in a lot of different places and that's not it's not normalized properly how about here uh, can I figure out let's say the address from the customer name well Alan Smith is one customer name there's an address from Miami let's see Ooh, there's another address from Boston so I guess there is no one-to-one -one relationship how about backwards Let's see, Campus Road goes with Roger Banks and goes with, uh, so I guess there isn't a one-to-one -one relationship between the name and the shipping address. Newsletter, well that's definitely not going to happen because a person can sign up to multiple newsletters and multiple people can sign up to the same newsletter. So there's, there's not going to be uh, the same relationship as here. We can't just separate it out just yet. So what I did is basically separate this out. This for now is gonna remain unchanged but this is separated out so I would remove the f the phone number column in here so now the item uh, is supplied by Microsoft and it's 250 but the phone number is listed here so now if I need to change the phone number for either one of these I can I can do it in one place and not, there's no redundancy and obviously the supplier is now its own primary key in its own table and is a foreign key in the item table and the foreign key simply means that in here you can only enter values that appear here if it's not in here, in, not in this table, you cannot put it in here. Let's say if you want to put in supplier Revlon or L'Oreal or something like that, those are not, those supply cosmetic products or whatnot. So they, 
if you don't sell those you can't just enter in here it has to be in the supplier table first before you can put it in here that's what the foreign key means okay so now all columns can be determined only by the key in the table and no other column um, well this side is done for sure there's no no further way to normalize it there's only this side left so fourth normal form no multi-value dependencies well what does that mean what's a multi-value dependency it's basically this this field depends on the customer ID this address depends on the customer ID and the subscription depends on the customer ID so these are all dependencies of the key however there's still a problem as you can see Evan Wilson is in here twice with the same address because he subscribed to two different newsletters so if he would change his address I would have to change it two places or what if he would unsubscribe to this thing then then what do I just put a null here or try to decluge my database uh, because now I have uh, two entries or what if it unsubscribe for both of them then I'm gonna have two nulls and two of the same values or same thing if if this person signs up for a new the Xbox newsletter I repeat his user ID and the customer name and shipping ad is just it just basically like you either leave it as null or just randomly repeat it because what are what are you gonna put there so the multi-value dependency is a situation where one column can have different values a different amount of values than let's say the other column for example in this database I didn't allow multiple shipping addresses per customer every customer has one shipping address but they have multiple newsletter but in real life let's say if you have an Amazon account you can have multiple let's say credit card numbers on file and the checkout at checkout you choose which one you want to use and you could have multiple shipping addresses one for home one for work so for one person you could have uh, let's say two shipping addresses and four credit cards well how do you make a proper table out of that the amount of rows in this column is not the same as in this column let's say for example I would have one shipping address and two credit cards and then I would add another shipping address what would I put in the credit card field just randomly select one of them you see how that's that's a situation where you have these fields depend all on the key which is called the multi-value dependency but there's different amount of uh, values that can be put into each row I mean I'm sorry in each column uh, so obviously at this point this needs to be separated out and what I separated out is the customer ID customer name and the shipping address is gonna be one table and the newsletter and the customer ID will be another table this these remain the same so as you can see now every customer only appears once Wilson 44 was eliminated twice because we don't need that so now if I need to change his address he's only in here once I don't have to change it twice and these are his subscription he's in here twice so if the query that returns the uh, who what kind of newsletters need to go out will return him properly because he'll be in here twice if this person signs up to another one he'll be in here twice and the query will return it accordingly or let's say Roger unsubscribes he'll be removed and the query that returns the newsletters will not uh, return his name but his address will be still intact here no problem um, these are the relationships 
between the tables and and also um, gave the tables names because now I know what they are so this means this one to many this means the customer appears in this table one time but in the sales invoice table he will appear multiple times uh, an item will appear one time in the items table but will be sold multiple times a uh, supplier will appear one time but can supply multiple items and the customer will appear one time here but he the person can have multiple subscriptions or not at all none at all so now this table is fully normalized and thanks for watching